Every time you hold the Quran or every time you step to pray, it has a big impact on you. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, He said, when my servant asks you about me, tell them I'm very close. You know, we all know that in, in the month of Ramadan, the shaitan is chained. Now you are left to defeat your own desires. And now it's up to you how strong you are. And many times what we see in our masajids or in our masks is that when we have someone new, all they get is the hugs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Some of the things that a lot of Muslims struggle with is getting closer to Allah. And especially in the youth, it's been a real big problem. And I've had the question as well as a lot of other Muslims on how can we get closer to Allah and how can we be sincere in getting closer to Allah. So for that, I brought my dear brother Ahmed to share some advice that would benefit all of us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What do you think is, is the best thing to start with when you want to become a better Muslim yourself? You know, just starting off. To become a better Muslim, honestly, it is, first of all, we have to understand in every step that you want to take toward Islam, you know, you don't want to, you know, blindly following something. Right. So you want to understand what you are what you are following and before that comes then first of all you need to ask yourself am I ready to do what am I ready to pursue what I want to pursue and after that you know there is guidelines that we they were set for us and uh, it's to seek knowledge and seeking knowledge starts with uh, with your intention it starts with your intention and and I'll follow the fundamentals, pillars of Islam, you know, yeah. start, you know, sincerely, you know, following those fundamentals like the Shahada, like the, the prayer, which is our the biggest action, you know, or maybe the number one action mm -hmm. you know, after the Shahada. Those kind of stuff, you know, and read more. You know, read Quran. The more because the more you read Quran the more you will learn. Recently, I've myself, you know, I, I haven't been, you know, the greatest Muslim. I'm, I'm still young, alhamdulillah, and I'm trying Nobody to build Nobody is, brother, exactly. nobody is. We're, exactly. all, we're all trying our best. Exactly. We're and, all trying our best. And, and alhamdulillah, recently, I've been a lot closer to the masjid than I used to be, alhamdulillah. And I, I've been, you know, keeping up with all my salah consistently. Alhamdulillah. 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 And um, I've also been trying to, to read Quran a little bit more. Mashallah. And... I, I find it a lot more peaceful than it used to be before. But getting that motivation to come back to Islam, I feel like my life's been a lot more peaceful. Do you do you find that in your life too as well? Every day, brother. Every day. Every day. It, regardless of how much how much time you do it, but every time you hold the Quran or every time you step on on the musalla to, to pray. You know, uh, it has a big impact on you every day. The minute you pick, even though you are like reading again and again and again and again, but every time you hold that book, it teaches you something new. You find, you know, it's like a mysterious treasure, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like mysterious treasure. And the minute you open it, you find something new. You'll be amazed, you know, mesmerized every time, every time. Yeah. So, and, and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interacts with us, you know, and he hides some things he teaches you some things and he knows when to for you to be able to learn certain things and as long as our intention is pure for sure Allah will teach us subhanallah subhanallah and on on the topic of intentions um how how do you think that intentions you know shape the the process of our repentance you know when we when we seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now our intention is the number one thing that we need to look at when when we want to do every act of worship every act of worship we wanted to dedicate solely for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know you don't want you don't want to make that action you know impure right and you know, so you are singling out that action 
that you're doing only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this not only that it, it's a means of your action to be accepted and be rewarded, but it is also, it is also, you know, teaches you and improves you in God consciousness. So the more you do it, you purify your intention, the more God consciousness you're building to yourself. I, I, I feel like recently I've, I've been, you know, a lot more, I've had more sincerity in, in repentance, you know, and I, I've, I've done my own research and I've seen that it's all about your efforts. Allah really loves effort, you know, and when you put in that effort to to want to be better, better yourself and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how many ups and downs you have, as long as you have that effort from the beginning to the end, Allah will accept your da'a, inshallah. Definitely. Allah, Allah does accept every du'a. But uh, he is. Allah accepts every du'a. As the Prophet وسلم, said, you know, ask Allah and Allah will respond. And it may and, not be now. It could be later, yes. right? Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, he said, he said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ When my servant asks you about me, tell them I'm very close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ And I respond to every call when they call upon me. Subhanallah. You know? And, and look, it's very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a condition. You know, puts a condition. You know, so if we follow these conditions, you know, then for, for sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will accept every dua we make. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَاسْتَجِبْ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So Allah puts this little condition that, that to what? To, re, to respond to respond to me فَاسْتَجِبْ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي To respond to me and believe in me Allah says respond to him in you know, in his command and whatever that he commanded us, you know, we follow it and whatever he he prohibited us from and we stay away from it. When we follow this and we believe that this is a command from Allah, we do it only for the sake of Allah, then for sure Allah will, will accept our dua and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us even more. But, you know, the thing is, the thing is, we human beings, we are so hasty. We want yeah. everything to be at the time that yes. you ask for it, right? We are so hasty to a point to a point that you know, if I want something, I want it right now. Yeah, exactly. You know? So let me one one day at work uh, with my coworker, he was arguing with me, and he was like, he was like, if your Lord is not responding, is not responding to what I want, then I can't believe in. You know, of course, he's he's you know he he's a non-Muslim and he's not a Muslim, you know. But you know, and with this question, you know, I answer him with a common sense. I answer him with a common sense. I'm like, let's bring an example. What do you want? And he says, he says, I want like you know, I want to have like a billion dollar, you know. I, if I ask him for a billion dollar, will he give it to me right now? And I and I told him, you know, two hours, you know, let's say from two hours from now, and you go outside, there is a mountain of money. You know, there is a mountain of money. And you saw it, the first expression you will have is, is that you're going to freak out. It's like, whose money is this? You'd be like, whose money is this? Maybe you will steal some and run away. You know, maybe you will start calling for people whose money is this? Right. Or maybe you will even go crazy. You know, so if he gives it to you in this way, because you already forgot that you asked. Yeah, you and not only that, you're going to need some, some, you know, trailers <laughs> to carry the money. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're going to need some trailers to carry the money. But I told him he cannot answer you like that. So what he needs is your effort. 
you know you make that effort, you make dua make that effort and he will bless you bless you bless you keep blessing you until you get to a million by the time you have a billion or millions in your account you're not gonna freak out you're not gonna go crazy you'll be like i worked for this but in reality is your dua that you made and allah responded to you in this way it's all about patience yes and you know we're like pretty good friends alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah and, and alhamdulillah. i want to be as sincere as possible as i am to 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 me to like expressing my friendship and my love to you and all my other brothers uh in islam and how does you know understanding the concept of forgiveness the forgiveness of allah and forgiveness for your brothers um impact like our sincerity when we like talk or when we interact or we do anything like that so to be honest is a purity of the heart you know to clear your heart against any brother of yours clear from you know grudges conquer and all this you know make your heart clean don't hold anything toward toward your your brother or your sister you know any muslim even even the other ones you treat them with kindness even those who don't believe you treat them with kindness because your action could be a form of dawa for them right you know but what i'm saying is how to your sincerity is can have a big impact when it comes with the dealing toward your with with your brothers is that you need to look at yourself the first thing look at yourself what do you want what is the outcome okay you want good right yeah you course. want good you know so they say they say treat someone how you will want to be treated right you know but look what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us you know he said none of you guys will enter paradise except until you believe and no one will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself You see? Yeah. Now, to love for your brother what you love for yourself, what you love for yourself, it is also to hate for your brother what you hate for yourself. And look, in this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, you know, "Awala adullukum ala shay'in in fa'altumuhu tahabbabtu baynakum." Should I not teach you guys something that if you were to do that you will it will bring love between between you and the sahaba they were like bala ya rasul allah indeed indeed our messenger of allah teach us and he said abshi us salam baynakum pass the greetings between yourselves now now here is where it starts many of us we say salam Many of us, I say, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. You may say, Wa Alaikum Salaamu wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. But the question is, did I really mean what I said? Do we have that sincerity in yes. our heart? Yes. Do we have that sincerity in us that when I say Salaam, this is a dua. Do I really mean to pray for you or or is it just like, hi? Obligated, like an What's obligatory up? thing. Yeah. Know, is it just like that or, you know? No, because hello, you know, hello. Even some people they translate salam to be hello. Salam is not a hello. Salam is a, is a prayer. You know? So we we say assalamu alaykum. I want peace for you. Wa rahmatullahi and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be on you. Wa barakatu and also his blessings to be on you. Look, but many of us we don't mean it. We just say it. but we really don't mean it and this is where it starts and this is exactly what it means when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told told us should i not teach you guys if you were to do it it will bring love between yourselves is it starts with salam and it's also like forgiveness if you don't forgive your brothers for what they've done to you how could you expect allah to forgive you right yes for when it comes to forgiveness when it comes to forgiveness for you know first of all do not expect as you know we all make mistakes right we all make mistakes and and of course someone someone may come and do something wrong to you or someone else may piss you off really bad 
But then we, what we need to do is we need to look at ourselves that, you know, this is whereby, you know, you're clearing, you're clearing your heart from every, you know, resentments, you right. know, from against your brother is like the strong one that be like, you know what, you know, I'll take him, may Allah forgive him, you know, I will ask forgiveness for him. Right. Before he even asks Allah for forgiveness, I will ask forgiveness for him. So you ask forgiveness for your brother, you know, this also is like a treatment for yourself. It's a treatment for your heart. Because at that moment, you are cooling yourself down, and then you're like, you know, I'm asking for him, or oh, definitely I need to, you know, I need I need to forgive myself and forgive him because I need to understand that what brings you is to understanding that we all make mistakes. In fact, look at Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam, when he was created, what did he do to, to be brought to this earth? He committed a sin. He didn't listen to Allah's command. Was that, was that just by mistake or Allah wanted that to happen? Allah wanted that to Allah, happen. Allah, exactly. Allah wanted it to happen. You know, Allah wanted to. And there is a wisdom. There is a wisdom. You know, there is a, you know, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, it says, and, and Allah taught him something, you know, and Adam said, and Adam said, then Allah forgive him. This was the first time, you know, that forgiveness was implemented. Yeah. Allah made Adam, made that mistake. He it was already decreed that he will do that mistake. And it was, Allah knew that he will do it. And Allah knew he will teach him. He will teach him how to ask for forgiveness. And Allah will forgive him. And in fact, the Prophet Sallallahu said, if we were all to be straight, good, perfect, no mistakes, Allah will have replaced us with the people who will do mistakes and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you look at it, what is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one? The most merciful. The most merciful and the most, most forgiving. forgiving yeah. You know? So when you when we say Ghafoor Rahim, or we say Al Ghafoor, you know, Al Ghafoor or Al Ghafar, you know, it exactly means he is the forgiving. So if we are to be perfect, not doing any, not doing any wrong, and not asking him for forgiveness. You know what meaning will this name have? There would, yeah, there would be no meaning to the name. That's right. So, and uh, and uh, and you know, it doesn't stop there. To be honest, in on how to you know bring ourselves or purify myself to what our brother is that. When you forgive, because when a brother when a brother comes to you and he said, "Oh, I forgive you," do you really mean it? You know, do you really mean it, or you're just saying it? Because because there is those who will say it, but then the minute they walk, the minute they walk away, you know, they'll be like, "Oh, you know, it's in front of people. I just say it, you know." But in my heart, I really but my don't. heart yeah. didn't, you know, and this is dangerous. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafa'alun. O you who believe, why do you say something that you do not do? And then he said, Kapura maqtan inda Allahi, an taqulu ma la tafa'alun. The most hatred thing in the sight of Allah is that you say, that which you do not do. So what this tells us is when we say it, we need to mean it. You know, in our mouth, in with our we say it with our tongue and we mean it inside ourselves. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, really looks what is in our heart. Uh, what is in our heart? Allah looks in Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum. So Allah does not look how beautiful we are, how handsome we are. No, Allah don't care about that. 
You know, Abba doesn't care about our bodybuilders, you know, <laughs> whether we have, where we lift, uh, you know, 300 or 400, 600. Allah, Allah don't look into that, but Allah looks into our heart. What does it mean is that, you know, we say, you know, and we mean it. You know, we say with our tongue, but we mean it inside ourselves. So, so on that point of purity, right? Um, it, I I see myself, you know, you know, straying, staying away from sin, alhamdulillah. But there's always going to be a time when you know you make an accidental sin, or you you do it and you know it's wrong, but you still do it anyways. And how can we have that purity in our heart? How can somebody strive to, you know, minimize that part of, of our lives? How do we like not get that close to sinning and and like and draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is a very good question, by the way, you know, because this is where consciousness comes. You know, being consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in, in one of the hadith, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ittaqillah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be. And follow whatever bad, whatever bad that you do, follow it with good. Because that good erases the bad. And be among people with a good manner. And with good man. So you keep yourself awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will help. And two things. Two things. There is black and white, right? There's black and white. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's calling you toward al-Jannah. Toward his forgiveness. Then you have shaitan who's calling you toward the hellfire, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to have those things in your mind, you know, that shaitan will always play tricks to make me, you know, to make me, to, to get me far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah always calling me toward him, toward himself. So here... What you need to do is by implementing this hadith, by remembering, by having consciousness, you know, the trickery of the shaitan, you know, this will make you aware of what shaitan does and how tricks he play. And shaitan, he is smart. He is smart. But his, his, his actions are weak. All he, yeah, all he does is whisper to us. Yes. He doesn't make us do anything. But his action are weak. And Allah testify. In Nakeda, shaitan is weak. Shaitan's actions or trickery are very weak. Now, let me tell you one funny story. So, one day, uh, I was listening to a sheikh, and this sheikh, you know, he was he was uh, you know explaining explaining this story was was very funny, and 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 I think it is good to share with with people to also to know. So there was a guy whom he was like every woman passes by him, you know, he is not taking his eyes off them. <laughs> you know? Every woman passes, or oh, he's got his eyes on them. So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to guide him, you know, so he, he tried his best and he couldn't, you know, he's like, he's having a hard time. And this is where I'm coming to your point. He's having a hard time. So he went to a sheikh and asked him, I'm having this problem that every woman passes, you know, I have to look and, and I know, and I know, you know, we're not supposed to, what can I do? So the sheikh tells him, how committed are you? The sheikh asks him, how committed are you? And he said, I am committed to live, to abandon this. And his, the sheikh told him, every time you look at a woman, pray to Raqqa. Go home or go to the masjid, wherever close you are, however, wherever you are, wherever you can pray. Make two raka'at, sunnah, and ask Allah for forgiveness. So he did. You know, the first day, 
The first day he prayed like 16 rakats. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> this means <laughs> this means he he looked at women how many times? Eight, eight times. times. You know? He looked at women eight times. He does he trying his best. You know, he's trying his best not to look, but he looked how many times? He looked eight times. So he had to pray 16 rakat. And you know. After after that day, the following day, he prayed eight rakat. How many times did he Four look times. at women? Four times. So he's he's like, oh yeah, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. He's like so excited. You know, the third day he prays, he prays two rakat. He prays two rakat. That means he looked only one time. The whole day he looked at women one time. So the fourth day. As soon as he heard footsteps, you know, the shaitan comes and tells him, look down. don't look, <laughs> like there is a woman coming. <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah. Why will shaitan comes with this kind of so tricks? So you don't get closer to so Allah. So you don't get close, you don't go to pray because the minute you go to pray, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only Allah forgives you, but Allah draws you even closer to him. Subhanallah. So this is the trick of shaitan, and we need to understand how, how he plays his tricks and how we can also defend ourselves because he can he will cause you, if, the, if you're doing something great, which, which achieves you great rewards, you know, he will persuade you, you know, to something that, you know, that gives you a little bit of a reward. You know, not, not as great as that one, lower, but he'll be like, oh, even this is still good. It's still good. Right. You're still doing good thing. You're still doing good thing. He comes and whispers to you, you're still doing good thing. This is not bad. You're not making no mistake. Right. But he's leaving you. He's making you to leave, you know, what, what you can achieve, great rewards, and brings you even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and, and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first and foremost is salah and doing adhkar, reading Quran. You will always, you will always be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of Quran, it's a miracle and it's a living, it's a living friend of everyone who adapts it. So, you know, Ramadan is right around the corner, alhamdulillah. And, alhamdulillah, and, and I can't wait. <laughs> alhamdulillah, um, me too. Ramadan, I usually, I'm a lot more closer to Allah than I am, you know, the regular other months of the of the year. And it's like, I, I feel that it's it's easier for me to, to, to be, you know, on task to do all my salahs, to read the Quran, you know. Every, every salah you read four pages so you can, you know, complete the mushaf by the end of Ramadan. And it's like, is there a reason for that? Of course, there is a reason for that. And that's that's not even a question to ask. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, we all know that in, in the month of Ramadan, the shaitan is chained. Right. You know, the shaitan, the big shaitan is chained. Now you are left to, you are left to defeat your own desires. You know, you are left to, to defeat your own desire. Now it's up to you how strong you are. And this is why you see in the month of Ramadan you will have more Muslim in the in the in the mosques than any other month. How how can we how can we carry that past Ramadan? Yeah, yeah. When you are in the month of Ramadan and you're doing you're reading salah on time and everything that to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first question is intention. Comes intention. Does is your intention pure, or is it because it's just the month of Ramadan that people will, if I do this, people will see me and people criticize me? You know, after that, after that, do what are you trying to get out of it? What are you trying to get out of Ramadan? Are you trying to read as many as you can, and once Ramadan is done, that's it. You know, or are you trying to learn more in Ramadan so you can carry on? So this is where comes the intention, it takes an effect, is because you need you need to set a goal. That goal is to improve myself. And not only that, you're training yourself. 
in those months before Ramadan, maybe we have some weakness of doing something wrong that we couldn't control ourselves. But month of Ramadan came, this is a self-restraining. You know, so we're learning how to avoid. And for sure, if we can avoid something in Ramadan, it's much easier to avoid in other month. You know? So it all comes, it all comes under the intention and how conscious you are and what goals you're pursuing. What's what is the significance of uh of salah as like a fundamental like connection between a believer and Allah? Sometimes I explain this to my kids. You, know? you have a, you have your parents' phone number, right? Right. Take out one number, dial nine numbers. Will that phone go through? No, it won't go through. You know. So Allah also has a number. I tell my kids, Allah also has a number. If we take one out, it won't go through. And my kids ask me, what is the number of Allah so we can dial? <laughs> you know, I tell them the number is 24434. And, <laughs> you know, one day they they literally took a phone. They wanted to dial. Subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ringing. And I'm like, I will explain to you. <laughs> you know. If you like this video, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support us, go and subscribe to our Patreon. The direct communication, Salah is a direct communication between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you take the phone number to call your parents or your loved ones, you know, by dialing their number if they're not close to you, you know, or you don't see them, you know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he also has a number. To be honest, he also has a number that you got to dial, which is Salah. You know, and so this Salah is what I mean by 244. Three, four is by two raka'at fajr, four raka'at duhr, and four raka'at asr, three raka'at maghrib, and four raka'at isha. So two, four, four, three, four, this is the raka'at, the number of raka'at that we need to pray to get closer to Allah, to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time you do, you get closer to Allah. Every time you dial those numbers, every time you prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get close. What you need to keep the consistent, consistent and not missing one salah because it was prescribed five times a day. You know, and I'm sure you know how the salah was brought down yeah. you know, to us. And and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like you said, like you said, you know, salah is what keeps us, you know, between makes us different from the non-Muslim. You know, look around, and today, especially in this country, you know, or in in this current world, you know, you will see many people that they say it doesn't matter what faith you're in as long as you're doing good. You know, to us, the Muslim. To, and to every Muslim should matter, you know, should matter. Because the Prophet wasallam specifically said, what, what separates us and those of non-Muslim is salah. It's the first major action in our faith that brings us close to Allah that we get direct communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives us the idea of being a Muslim, you know, that we are recognized as a Muslim by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, is through salah. Is through salah. And the minute we leave that, we neglect that, then, then we are getting out of the fold of Islam. And the more we pray, the more shaitan you know, the more we protect, we 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 protect. The more we preserve our prayer, the more shaitan will stay away from us. Right. And the more we neglect, is the more that you know, shaitan will get even closer to us. Right. You know, so this is the impact of the prayer in our in our life, in our daily life. You know, in in a lot of things that I do, I try to be as sincere as possible. And alhamdulillah, you know. I feel like I'm sincere, but 
how do I know I'm 100% sincere in what I do? Well, what if sometimes, you know, I'm, I think that I'm sincere, but sometimes, you know, in my heart, in my, I might not be. How do I know that, you know, I mean what I do? How can I know that you're not sincere? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. You know, you know, it is, it is clear. We cannot know, you know, we can only judge you by the action you do. But what is inside you, it's Allah who knows. And yourself knows that if, whether you're doing this for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, whether you're doing it right and whether you're doing it wrong, you know, this is a different right. this is a different topic. Because you you may have the correct intention, but you may have you may not have the correct knowledge to apply that action. Right. You know? You may have the correct knowledge to apply that particular action. Now this is different. Now if you made this mistake, you know, unknowingly and not blindly following someone, you know. Let's say not blind following someone, you did it unknowingly, you know, perhaps you were expecting to be rewarded, Allah will reward you. But the minute someone approaches you or you came to find out that the way you were doing, it was wrong and now you need to do the right way, then you need to correct yourself right away. And forget what you're doing, even if people are known known you for that, you know, you need to correct yourself. Why you need to correct yourself is because if you do not correct yourself, then you're ignoring the correct knowledge. You're ignoring it. And that makes you an ignorant. That makes you an ignorant. But if you are following what is taught, this makes you a believer, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, when Allah and his messenger decides upon a matter, the believer should not have their choices or their opinions. Right. You know? So this is what it means. Um, and of course, recently we've been getting, alhamdulillah, a lot more of reverse to the Islam. And how, how can they start to become a Muslim, Yani? Uh, you know, I have a lot of friends. I've made uh, uh, some friends that are reverts and I've, I've seen, uh, you know, sometimes they do struggle. How can we ensure that um, they know that this is a struggle and inshallah it will just be easier for them? To help them, to help them, the first step is to, to try your best to keep them away from the influence that, you know, the influence that they're in, whether it be their friends, you know, whether 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 be their maybe, you know, substances, you know, that you know they use that keeps them away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We need to be very careful and conscious and mindful so that we do not get dragged in. Mm -hmm. You know, so we our intention is to help them. And our intention is to bring them out of darkness to the light with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so first of all, they need to understand that, you know, everything has a test. We were created to be tested. You know, whether we will submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. And when they understand that, you know, and they need to make a choice on the on the things that they want on the things that they what do they they become a muslim you know do they want to be better muslim then how can they be better muslim i'll say i'll say i'll take this you know and and this brings us back to repentance you know brings us back to repentance about the the guy the man who have killed 99 people you know, he killed 99 people, you know, and he wanted to ask for repentance. He, but he wasn't sure whether Allah is going to forgive him or or not. So he went to someone, you know, so-called scholar, okay? He asked, he asked him, is there, I have killed, uh, he said, I have killed the 99 
people in my life and I want to repent to Allah, will Allah forgive, forgive my sins? You know, and this so-called scholar, the reason I say so-called scholar is because he gave a wrong fatwa at this. Uh, he gave a wrong judgment, a wrong fatwa at this right. point. He said, no, there is no forgiveness for you. You killed the 99s. How can Allah forgive you? You know, and this guy, he said, oh, since I killed 99, you become the 100. Might as well make it 100. You know, <laughs> you know he's like, might as well just be the 100, you know. So he killed him, but he did not lose hope. You see, this is another thing. He did not lose hope. He went to another scholar. Now this, the second one was a scholar. I know the second one was a scholar. So he went to him. He said, I have killed a hundred people. Will Allah forgive me? You know, and he said to him, as long as you breathe, you know, he told him, Allah, and the sun has not risen, has not risen from the other side, Allah will forgive you. But he told him something very specific that we need to, we need to pay attention to it and we need to take wisdom out of this. And every, every revert, you know, every revert needs to learn from this. What did he tell him? He tell him, but because you killed those people from this city, you know, and they know you, so it will be better for you to move to another city to go ask Allah repentance over there because nobody knows you. See, now, what do we need to take from this, from his wisdom is that if we need to change something, we need to leave our, we need to leave or to get away from the people that we're surrounded with or the things that we are surrounded with. You know, you're surrounded with many things that, you know, influences you to go back to who you are. Then, then we need to take the big steps and move toward where we cannot be influenced. If it's friends, then we need to leave them and go to where, whereby, you know, you will have good people who will support you toward this journey, you know. So this will help not only the reverse, but even for ourselves, you know, for ourselves and for every day-to-day -day Muslim. We need to, to look and reflect, how can I change myself? You know, I'm doing this bad, but I need I need to change myself. Is the answer is leave it and go do something. You know, if if you think and if you think you leave it, if you leave it, sometimes you know it's a job. Sometimes it's a job. You know, you're doing something job that is not halal. You know, and and you want to leave it. You feel guilty, but you want to leave it for the sake of Allah. But then you, you're asking yourself, you know, will I get another job? You know, will I get another job? This is like similar, like when this guy was asking, will Allah forgive me? Will Allah forgive me? You know, but what? Allah will not forgive, will not forgive you still doing it. So what he had to do is, this guy he had to do is, he had to leave the city to go seek to go to another city to seek the mercy of Allah, to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also need to leave that for the sake of Allah and go and go do something better, even if, you know, even if it is small or pays less, pays less, but Allah is happy with There's us. There is barakah. In there it. is barakah. There is a bless. Allah will bless us. And sometimes, this is my own, you know, I have experienced it. You know, I have experienced it when I, when I fast came to United States, you know, but Alhamdulillah, you know, I left it, you know, I left it and I went something good. They, all oh, my friends are like, oh, don't do that, don't do that. I said, no, I said, as long as I live for the sake of Allah, Allah will give me something better than this. You know? And he did. So this is something that we all need to take lesson and we all need to take wisdom that the influence, the people around us or the things around us is what drags us back. And as long as we don't make any change, there won't be any change. But the minute we take steps, Allah will come toward you. Because whoever walks toward Allah, Allah runs toward them. So for the, for the people new to Islam, you know, for the reverts, um, how could they go about 
understanding Islam a lot uh, better? You know, how can they get that first push into Islam and understanding it and getting the knowledge? You know, this is a very good question and it's also sad. You know, many times what we see, you know, in our masajids or in our mosques is that when we have someone new, you know, all they get is the hugs. You know, they get millions of hugs and then, you know, we leave them, we leave them like that. And they get confused. Of course, it's emotional for them, but we also need to follow the footsteps that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he did with the with the new Muslim that they used to come, that the Prophet will used to pair them with certain Sahaba to be with them, to teach them. Right. You know? And of course, you know, nowadays everyone is busy, so you know, they get the hugs, you know, they take all the phone numbers in the masjid, you know, everyone gives them the phone numbers, <laughs> yeah. you know, but then it ends there. That's the saddest part. But is it is it like that's the only way? No, absolutely. What I will encourage for our brothers and sisters who are reverts, you know, I will encourage them to go to Islamic Online University, the diploma section. There is a diploma section, and there is, you know, uh, you know, a higher education if whoever wants to pursue it as well. You know, and and I'm not doing advertising here. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm just giving reference because you know, mashallah, you know, I learned a lot. I myself, you know, I learned a lot from Islamic Online University. I took my diploma from Islamic Online University, you know, and I, and I am a student of online Islamic Online University until now, alhamdulillah. So, you know, in Islamic Online University, they have a a program and lessons, you know, for for the reverts. Like literally, the first day you took you take your shahada, they have a first day Muslim, you know, first day Muslim, and they explain in a very simple way. It's an English in an, it's in English, you know, very simple, basic stuff, you know, and this kind of stuff is what is what they need to improve. So if we can, if if you know someone who knows them and you can pair them with, with this new river, it'd be a good thing. But if you all, all that you're going to offer them is the hug, you know, then at least offer them a site whereby they can help themselves, you know, to learn more about Islam. So I will really recommend, you know, for any rivers, to go to Islamic Online University diploma section, and then you know they have the college if they want. Alhamdulillah, and may Allah help them. Would that also be a recommendation for you know, let's say somebody younger, like someone like me, or somebody even younger that wants to you know just learn more about Islam and educate themselves about Islam, and maybe possibly becoming a student of knowledge. Absolutely, I would say when it comes to Islamic Online University, the diploma section is mostly in English. And if you want the Arabic for beginners as well, they do have those classes. But if you are pursuing to go to Medina, you know, to go to to other, let's say you go and you want to pursue another country to go learn, I will recommend while you are waiting for all this process. Get yourself ahead of the ahead of the game. You know, get yourself ahead of the game by going to Islamic Online University. This is a good start. You know, this is a very good start. It's in English. You will understand a lot better. When you go to wherever your dream is to go get your your degree, you know, you'll be like, you already pushed yourself. Yeah. You know, you already pushed yourself. So I do recommend to so every English speaking, you know, English speaking generation or youth, you know, to see if that is something that they would like. And if they have a way to go to Medina, to go to these other countries, you know, do it as soon as possible, you know, because it's age capped. By the way, I want to give, you know, a good news to the Rivats, you know, in, in Medina University. You know, they accept all age for reverts. MashaAllah. You know, they accept all age for reverts. So if they want to pursue that, it's a good thing. As for born Muslim, 
their age is capped. <laughs> you know? So unfortunately for us, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a hard <laughs> But alhamdulillah, 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 we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. And I'd, I'd really like to thank you for, you know, giving me this knowledge uh, today. It, it's It's been really helpful. Jazakallah khair. This is, I'm not giving no knowledge, brother. <laughs> you know, don't, don't put me in that position. You know, I am not knowledgeable and I'm not, I'm not even yet a student of knowledge, you know. I'm trying, I'm still, you know, struggling to learn myself. But, you know, like, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, a da'wah, you know, or to share, it is not, it is not until you become, you know, sophisticated scholar, you know, even with one ayah that you have, you know, share it. you share it. You know, you should, as long as you share it the correct way, you know, and alhamdulillah, then you're in the right direction. You know, don't add, you know, stuff in there, you know. But other than that, you know, that's all we'll have to do. And mm -hmm. what I'm doing is just, you know, sharing the little that Allah has blessed me with. Jazakallah you know? khair. So, and I learn a lot from you as well, <laughs> by the way. I learn a lot from you, mashallah. You know, it's it's good to see you again. Alhamdulillah. You know? it's good to see Alhamdulillah. You well. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. Oh, jazak. May Allah, may Allah reward you. Ameen. And ameen. all the efforts that you guys are taking. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan beneficial for all of us. Ameen. You know, we need to prepare ourselves. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all of our brothers and sisters in, in Gaza. Ameen. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen them and give them more patience. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, to send his help. And uh, of course, you know, we're here where our hands are tied. We do what we can do. We but we, will, we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help to reach there for our Muslim brothers. It hurts all of us, you know, but we can only do much. You know, our hands are tied, but we feel the pain. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them and help and strengthen us. Ameen, ameen, Allah, ameen. If you like this video, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and if you'd like to support us, go and subscribe to our Patreon.